tell me about whole cartridge. It's a long story, Johnny. It goes back a long, long way. My grandfather was in business, originally selling calcium carbide. And believe it or not, in the mid-1930s, there was what became known as a calcium carbide war. The management decided that they'd better look for something else and they came up with retailing shotgun cartridges. My grandfather went out and sold shotgun cartridges around Yorkshire and maybe Lincolnshire. Just after World War II, they decided they were gonna make shotgun cartridges. So in 1947, Hull Cartridge Company Limited was incorporated. I know you're looking quite surprised because you don't know that. And I've saved it just to... The calcium carbide war. Calcium carbide was used for carriage lamps. And something called electricity came along. The national grid came along and fewer and fewer people wanted calcium carbide. And selling shotgun cartridges, believe it or not, to their existing client list was the way forward. My sister and I, Susan and I, are the third generation of family and I now have my two daughters and my son-in-law. It's a fully independent business still. We're absolutely passionate about making cartridges. The business, the people that we meet, the product that we sell quality that we insist on is second to none. How do you make a shotgun cartridge? So the first thing, make sure you buy the best components that you can. Then you've got to make sure that you mate up either the primer to the wadding to the propellants you use the best shot be it lead shot steel shot bismuth having assembled all those components together to make a lovely shotgun cartridge a shotgun cartridge is simultaneously a very simple concept and an infinitely complex one at its simplest, you need a case to house all of the components. A primer goes in the back of the case to ignite the powder in front of it. In front of the powder is a wad. That wad separates the powder from the shot that goes at the front, but it also seals the gases from the powder ignition against the walls of the barrel, giving you the pressure needed to launch the shot at the right speed. And of course, there is shot right at the front. That cartridge is then closed and is a sealed unit until you load it in your gun. The real mastery of the art is balancing and developing each of these individual components until you have developed the perfect shotgun cartridge. What makes a good cartridge? Hmm. Interesting question, what makes a good cartridge? Consistency, performance, pattern, cleanliness, low recoil. And of course the thing that we all like, a really good price. It's all about what the customer perceives he wants and what you offer him. Back in the day, super fast would have been looked at as being bumpy and it would have been outside our loading criteria but we decided that we needed to attract the sort of people that liked cartridges with slightly higher recoil so we came up with super fast we took one gram of lead out of that cartridge to reduce the payload to 27 grams we upped the speed and stuck a little bit of extra recoil in inside the whole factory is amazing 
We can't show you everything, but what we can show you is how one of their regular machines works. Cartridges are put in a hopper at one end. They're fed up and into the machine. Those cartridges go down a pipe and enter the production line. First off, powder is dropped in. This powder is carefully selected cartridge to cartridge to ensure the correct velocities, the correct recoil, and the correct pressures. After this, a wad is loaded. There's a different part of the machine for fiber wads, a different part of the machine for plastic wads, and now a different part of the machine for hydro wads. My favorite part of this process was watching the hydro wads get cut in the machine. The fact that they've been able to add this process during loading is pretty special. After that comes the shot. This can be steel, bismuth, lead, and of course, each of these metals isn't just a simple base metal. They are closely guarded recipes. A little pinch of this and a little bit of that will change the way that a metal works. And as such, developing the perfect pellet and then putting it in the perfect size with all the other components is key to success. And finally, inside the machine, the cartridge is crimped. I love this part of the process. Visually watching that machine crimp those cartridges is kind of cool. Once that cartridge is closed, they drop out of the machine and into two pipes, one to the left and one to the right. Have you ever wondered how when you open a box of cartridges, they're stacked back and forward, back and forward? This is the point in the process where that is done. They go up a conveyor belt and into the printer. This is where the name of the cartridge is added. And then they go down a little slide and finally into the packing machine. Hull train the operators of these machines to be perfectionists. Anything that doesn't hit the whole standard gets put to one side, ensuring the perfect product. So David, we've left the factory with a complete box of cartridges. We have indeed. What happens next? Okay, so for this one and only time, I'm gonna actually proof a cartridge for you. So watch carefully. So this is a proofing machine? This is our test barrel, which gives us the pressure and downrange, we'll get the V1, which is an average of uh, over two and a half meters, and we'll get V2, which is an average over 20 meters at 10 meters. So we'll introduce the cartridge in, simple as that. Close the action, turn it, then cock it, press the button, prime the machine, look for the trigger. Are we all ready? How was the trigger pulls? Excellent. Bit crunchy, but we won't worry about that. And so what has just happened there, other than firing a hydro ward out the end? Okay, so basically what's happened is, um, as soon as you fire the cartridge, the system turns on. Um, it gives you the ignition time, it gives you the time down the barrel, and at 25 millimeter from the breech face, it will record the pressure, which is the really important thing. It's, it's um, the level that we work to for safety under CIP. And there's a little pressure transducer here, which will vibrate when you fire the cartridge. And if you look close, Sash, you'll see there's a little dint there, and that's where the pressure will come through the transfer port, hit the face of the transducer, send a milliamp single round to charge amplifier, and the rest of it is actually history, which Magic appears on the printout at time after time. We'd normally do 10. What we're looking for, I presume, is for that pressure to be within the parameters of all the other hydrawards in the world. Yeah, so we work to a parameter, and normally we can get it quite tight. The hydraward helps us do that. Can I have a go? If you must. I would love to have a go. Okay, come this way, sir, come this way. Hydraward car shoes, this is Johnny. Oh, hi there. Okay. <laughs> so, in we go. In we go, push it home. Simple as that. Close that, twist it, pull that back. That's it, and then away you go with the grunchy trigger. Press the button. You're getting good at that red button. Ooh. We don't want you near any nuclear warheads now, well, do we? I'd be very tempted Your to just on for that red button, it's really dangerous. A bit grunchy. Brilliant. I did it. Fantastic, well done. And there we are. And so you're doing a chain of 10 every 50,000, 100,000? No, 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 we'll do that in the morning and we'll do it in the afternoon. 
Wow. And on the larger capacitor machines, we'll do it twice in the morning and we'll do it twice in the afternoon. And that's just to make sure everything that's is That's just to make sure everything is within the parameters that we uh, expect. There is not much that Hull Cartridge Company does not offer. Plastic wads, fibre wads, biodegradable wads, steel, lead, and of course a full array of sub-gauge ammunition. Their main 12-ball range is divided into three different lots. Traditional game, clay, and the new hydrowad. Their clay level has a few tiers. It starts with the entry level Compex and Superfast. The next step up is Intercomps and Sporting 100. After that comes my favorite, the Pro range. Pro Fibers and Pro Ones are some of the best clay cartridges out there. And at the top of the chain is Sovereign. These cartridges are awesome. In the game line, they offer everything from 26 gram 12 bores all the way up to the big goose loads. However, since moving to the Hydrowad steels, it's hard to go back. Cheap cartridges and expensive cartridges are not the same. Entry level cartridge, Compax. How is that different from a pro range? The idea of the Compax cartridge in its formative time was we were looking for a corporate cartridge. Back in the day, not at a proper shooting school, but you went somewhere for a lesson. The shooting school tried to just supply the cheapest cartridge you could get, which normally meant it came from Eastern Europe. Very, very bangy, so straight off, anybody that was even thinking of shooting clay pigeons would probably have been put off by that and never come back again. We realised there was an opportunity in the market to make a quality, reasonably priced cartridge. So it's got low brass, 28 grams of shot, standard, either a plastic wad or a fibre wad. The idea is that the velocity is lower to reduce the recoil, the little bit less powder in there, and all these things stacked up to make it a very affordable cartridge. Mm -hmm. Pro range and the Sovereign range, our elite competition shooters will use those cartridges where every clay counts. So those cartridges are doing the maximum amount of speed for, for it to still produce a good pattern. Um, the lead antimony level as well on the Pro and the Sovereign range is slightly higher to where a pellet or two may count. Hardened shot, yeah. harder strike. That's right, yeah. I saw the Sovereign six and a half over there. There isn't a shooter out there, certainly from the whole team and myself and a few others who don't carry some of those because they're what, 1600 feet per second, yeah. six and a half shot. That it's is a cartridge. Extremely, extremely fast and extremely hard hitting. At this point, I took the opportunity to patent test my own gun in the whole cartridge company's patent. <laughs> Wonderful. A lot of nerves shooting a pattern plate in front of a group of professionals. Let's hope you've hit it. I've definitely hit the bottom half. He's hitting something. <laughs> hope, hopefully hit the inside player that's going to have a look. Do you regularly pattern your cartridges? You say pat matters, it was a whole motto. Yeah, I mean, what I'd say is the consistency of the cartridge is the thing. We do a lot of patterning in, it in, in the early days uh, when we're actually developing the cartridge, making sure that we've got the velocity right where that we want it to be. Do we pattern day in, day out? No, we certainly don't do that. There's no need to. Because if all of the science Everything's the working. testing is good yeah. holistically, yeah. it should happen the other end. Yeah, so it tends to be with new products or if there's a product that we're going to um, look to change in some way, add in a new shot size, right, maybe introduce a new... Yeah, something like that. Any, anything that needs a bit more input, then we'll be patterning and patterning to just see if there's any little nuances we can look for that will help us perfect the load. All right, let's see if I hit it. Let's see if you hit it. So the ultimate question, and probably something a little bit different, and there's probably no real answer to this. What would happen to that pattern if you push it faster or slower? Okay, uh, the rules for velocity, and it will probably apply to steel, but maybe not as much. The faster the speed, the more the pattern opens the slower the speed, the pattern tightens. But what you would do with that, you would control the pattern um, with either the pellet size or the type of wad that you use. So if it's a fibre game wad, let's just say that there's no control there, so it's really speed and the pellet. When you're getting into a plastic wad or even if, if you're getting into a hydro wad, um, 
with steel shots, then obviously it is, it's really the pellet size that's important because you've got to get it down range. I always liken it to things like um, a cricket ball and a ping pong ball. So the ping pong ball will be the small pellet size and the cricket ball is something like the three or the two or the one. It will fly truer for longer with more energy. Steel shot was thrust upon us. First things, what I'd say, we've all been making cartridges using steel shot for at least 25 years plus. Steel shot itself is obviously lighter than lead, so it gives us volumetric problems because we've got a longer volume of shot to propel. So that means that we've got to look to more progressive powders. We need to protect the barrels, so back in the day it was a standard polyethylene plastic wad. As we're now moving to game shooting, we decided that biodegradable was the way forward, so we came up with our hydro wad system, which we're now starting to expand. We have quite a lot of different wads to deal with 65 millimeter, 70 millimeter, 76 millimeter in 12 gauge. We're about to launch a three inch cartridge, 76 millimeter in 20 gauge. We've got a 16 gauge cartridge coming along probably November time this year. How much effort has it been to get to where you are now when that announcement came a few years ago? It would have been easier if we hadn't have had COVID coming along. But apart from that, I would say the effort has been not monumental, but bearing in mind that we, we chose a specialist here in the UK to work with uh, a molder to make our wadding for us. We designed the wads, they then made them for us. The modifications for tooling and things like that. Finding the right material has been a real challenge because we started off on the water soluble route, but we decided that wasn't for us. We went for ultimate bar protection. So we chose a product that is already out there, uh, that's tried and tested, that will degrade. The degradation times are not that we would ho um, hope it to be, so it's not rapid, but the most important thing is that the cartridge has got a long shelf life. We will be working on things like degradation next year probably and try and cut that down. So at this point, all the cartridges are complete. They're put in boxes mm -hmm. and they're put in there. And palletized strapped, ready to go. And then when someone phones up, you just put them on a special pallet and send them to them. We do, yeah, yeah. We, we take their exacting requirements, gauge style, product type, and then it's all carefully packed in there by the girls. Shall we go and have a look at some of the range? Let's do it, yeah. There is a lot of ammunition in here, Sam. This is where the home of ammunition is. Do you have like a set stock level? Like in, I presume it's in the millions. Yes, yes, several million, depending on, depending on the load. Obviously, super fast and compact is a, is a regular go-to for most clairgrounds. So, higher levels, certainly, for those type of products. Sporting 100 is fairly new to the range. It is, yeah. Excellent club cartridge, fiber and plastic wad, seven and a half or an eight. When you're developing a new load, how long does that take? Months, sometimes years. We, we always patent test everything ballistically test everything, but we also like to have it out in the field using it ourselves for months on end before we actually release it to the public. Just a test that is actually good enough in the long yeah, run. Yeah, we've got a strict recipe that we, we always use as a guide and every batch should replicate that recipe um, month after month. So that if you're buying Sporting 100 today, it would be the same as it was three months ago and it'll be the same again in another three months. Back in the day, it was only fibre. Plastic came along and everybody liked something new. The thing that plastic brought to the market, the noise difference, everything was suddenly consistent. You looked at the line, bang, 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 bang. Whereas fibre, because it's natural, even though the ballistics were consistent, the report as you fired the cartridge, it was different. So people went, oh, fiber's inferior. Whereas actually, as we all now know, fiber is really consistent. It's a favorite. We shoot it all over the UK, and it's very, very popular. 
there's always the possibility that an idea from 15 years ago that was not suitable at the time now becomes in vogue and you can use it. How long did it take to develop something like Hydrowood? Years of uh, research and development, getting the right material, and, and then every load has a different wad depending on the payload. So a steel wad typically is, is a full cup wad because you need that payload for a 32 gram. You need every millimeter of that case for the wad. So that is no compression stage because you've got to fit it all into the 70 mil, is that what you're saying? There's still a compression stage, but it's a very small one as opposed to your, your lead wad, which almost goblet-like look to it. A steel one is, is a full cup. And that's why the three inch has been developed, to give you a little bit more room to play with? A little bit more room to play with as well, yeah, but also you, in terms of matching up to your chamber length. So if you've got a three inch chambered gun, um, the three inch, High as an extreme, matches up with the chamber length to reduce any sort of friction you might, you might get with a shorter cartridge. But that's what you guys are recommending now, is that we buy the right cartridge for our chamber exactly. So yeah, you, you must match your cartridge length to your chamber length. So high as an extreme being a three inch cartridge for your three inch chambers, high as an extreme 32 gram, 70 millimeter for your two and three quarter and then brand new to the market will be our Imperial Steel, which is 65 millimeter for your two and a half inch chambers. And I guess as time goes on, that three inch range will expand because if I've, I own a three inch gun, if I'm to use three inch cartridges, I would like as much variety as possible. That's right, so the, wad, the wadding in effect could be, could be altered to, um, to reduce the payload and perhaps have a 30 gram, a 30 gram three or, or four shot, yeah. It's gonna be interesting, I'm looking forward to trying some of those out and seeing what the difference is. Yeah. Lots of new lots of new exciting loads on the market coming. Yeah. What is next for Hull Cartridge? I think Hull Cartridge and the shooting industry have got to get over what I perceive to be a bit of a hump in the road. That hump in the road is the transition away from lead shots to non-lead shot ammunition. It's coming gradually. We need the time. We can only go as fast as our component suppliers will help us. We're starting to move in the right direction. The velocities are coming up, the pressures are going down. We've got to get the cleanliness right with the propellants, but everything is moving in the right direction. We're going on barrel safety. So the materials they're using at the moment, the degradation time is longer, as I mentioned earlier, but we believe we've got to look after our customers and their guns. But given time, the plastics companies, and let's call them the plastic companies, however you want to describe it, will be coming up with new substances that will give you a shorter degradation time whilst giving you the physical properties of the old fashioned uh, standard polyethylene wad that we've been accustomed to for 60, 70 years. That's where I think that we'll be looking in the next few years, getting over that hump. Further expanding our range, I've already explained that we've worked on 12 gauge, uh, some 20 gauge, a bit of 16 gauge. We've got this volumetric problem. As we go down to a 28 gauge, we've got a really big issue to see if we can get a shot column that is big enough for somebody to shoot. I haven't done any work on that yet. And I don't think anybody else has. We've been too busy playing catch up um, to get shooting to where it is right now. Once that's, once that's been sorted and that we're moving forward, then everybody will look back. Any, anybody new coming into shooting won't even know that leg ammunition ever existed. And, our, and as you saw yesterday and you've seen previous year when we've been out and done our testing, certainly up to 45, 50 meters you're shooting a steel shot cartridge. There's not a lot of difference. You've got to pick the right pellet size. Obviously, it depends on the gun. You've got to have the right choke, etc. Your gun's got to be fit for purpose. That issue will be overcome. I'm sure we'll have other challenges that we're not aware of, that nobody's even thought of, but we're a fairly resilient bunch.
is shooting going to be around a long time? And the answer is, I think so. We are hunter-gatherers, be it a clay pigeon, be it a pigeon, or a pheasant or a pasture. We all like to go out and enjoy the day. There'll be a lot of shooting for a long time, and I can assure you that the team here at Old Cartridge will be here for you for a long time.